Mr. Speaker, I rise to do two things. First of all, to second the motion that the bill entitled Land Registry Bill 2017 be read a second time. Mr. Speaker, you would have heard from our honorable colleague, the Attorney General, that the matter of our passage of the Land Registry Bill is critical to the development of St. Kitts and Nevis. You would have also heard him infer that the passage of land registry legislation is nothing new. He took the time to go back through our historical route in terms of being a landless people, to going through the process of crown ownership, and then towards independence, and then towards the empowerment of our people to land ownership. And a quick review of the historical literature relative to land registry would show us that as far back as 1862, the British government, our former owners and rulers, would have had in place Her Majesty's land registry established back then as a non-ministerial department. And today, they're virtually everywhere on the planet. That being said, what we are trying to accomplish today in Parliament by the passage of the Land Registry Bill is nothing phenomenal, but yet it is a step in the right direction for a number of reasons. A lot of them would have been explained by the mover of the bill. It sends a signal that St. Kitts and Nevis is serious about improving the traditional way in which we register property. It sends a signal that we are also serious about the services which we require from our court systems. And it sends the signal again that our team unity administration is also keen on improving the way in which business is conducted in the Federation in keeping with our commitment to be a pro-business government, which allows every citizen, resident, and authorized foreign investor to be able to conduct business in a manner that is efficient, that is simple, and that is effective. The move of the bill would have taken time to explain to the House the purpose and the benefits of the dedicated land registry. And he would have articulated that such property registration functions have been housed at the High Court, where the register of the High Court also functions as the register of lands. And it is an onerous undertaking from what I can only assume is correct information from persons in the legal profession and otherwise. However, I would wish to take a little bit of time to re-emphasize why the land registry is important and what it is intended to accomplish. Here are some of the benefits. It can save time and money. Given the traditional backlog that we have experienced in our court system, it is not uncommon for property registration to take up two years, sometimes longer than that. And of course, by having a dedicated land registry, we are trying to accelerate that process to facilitate property ownership by ensuring that it is also backed by the state. The issue of a title would therefore give greater security to the property owner as well. The land registry also introduces a strong sense of certainty and simplicity to the process of conveyancing. Under our present system, much time and energy can be expended in the process of reviewing lengthy and old title deeds to establish ownership and property rights. The registry also provides the general extent of the land for which title is being sought. And of course, it would include the survey plan to make it more clear. The registry also calls for digitization of the land registry files as alluded to by the mover of the bill. And this presents an extra tier of file preservation based on that system rather than the total reliance on the traditional paper-based system that is now in play. And of course, this IT infrastructure would also facilitate the creation of an electronic database of properties so that land ownership can be easily reviewed and assessed. The registry, by extension, facilitates access to capital by our citizens and businesses alike who would be able to use the title document to secure financing if they approach a lending institution. Under the new dispensation, the land registry system that will go into place, 
The management and storage of our certificates of title can be improved. This, again, was alluded to by the mover of the bill. And also, it reduces the likelihood because of the electronic backup in terms of having the COTs free from damage or loss, even if an original document has gone missing, because, of course, we have the double-tiered system of registration and backup of such files. With the dedicated land registry, the property owner always has proof of ownership in one single document, even if the historic title deed is lost sometime in the future. And I should also note that when properly outfitted, the land registry will be supported by cadastral maps that are up to date as well as reliable. And it also in turn will allow government to make better assessments and by extension collect our property taxes more efficiently. There's a fraud prevention strategy that also is embedded in this type of land registry system as it would prevent the copying and withholding of title deeds. It also blocks unscrupulous individuals from seeking to claim that another person's property is their own. And by extension, it will facilitate dispute settlement regarding ownership rights. When properly outfitted, the registry and the register book that the Act calls for will clearly outline, among other matters, the name of the owner, location of property, restrictive covenants that clearly state what the lands can be used for, easements or rights of way, etc., as well as any mortgages that may be taken out against the said property. The fund financial institutions, as a result of this, would find it easier in terms of their processing and approval of loan applications, especially when backed by instruments that are properly ready, um, registered and codified and easily accessible under the type of land registry system that we are envisioning. One of the things that I think is useful to mention in this debate, Mr. Speaker, is the fact that the creation of a land registry system also has the ability to improve the ranking of St. Kitts and Nevis as it relates to the World Bank doing business reports that are put out annually. And if my memory is correct, the World Bank's doing business assessments would have begun in 2004 after a project would have commenced in 2001. And there are about 10 indicators by which jurisdictions are ranked in terms of how easily or how difficult they make the process of business operation. Some of these indicators are, for example, dealing with construction permits, getting electricity, getting credit, protecting minority investors, paying taxes, resolving insolvency, and registering property, which is the very business that we are debating here today. Of course, as far as the World Bank is concerned, on the matter to do with the indicator of registering property, there are five dimensions on which jurisdictions are judged. <coughs> and these, these dimensions are the reliability of the infrastructure, the transparency of the information, the geographic coverage, the land dispute resolution mechanism, and the equal access to property rights. Now, one of the things that is apparent based on the doing business ranking, especially as it relates to the 2017 report, which would have been issued in the final quarter of 2016, as is the World Bank's practice, is that St. Kitts and Nevis finds itself in the unfortunate position of being ranked number 134 out of 190 jurisdictions. What we are also discovering is that this is the lowest ranking that St. Kitts and Nevis has ever had since the World Bank began doing these rankings in 2004. And to support this, I recall that in 2008, for example, we were ranked 63. In 2009, we were ranked 69. In 2011, we were ranked at 83. In 2014, we sunk to what was then our lowest position, which was 101, representing 18 spaces in terms of a drop from the prior position in 2011. And of course, as I prepared for today's debate, I was drawn to a release dated July 9th of 2014 
that was issued by CS Global, the international marketing firm that handles the CBI program. And in that release, interestingly, it announced back then that the government was about to pass in parliament the land registry bill once it had confirmed that cabinet had approved the draft that would be taken to parliament. Now, the move of the bill would have spent some time going over this matter as well, including the investments that would have been made by the EU. And I think my information predates it somewhat from my previous life that even before the EU, there was support from the OAS in terms of some support for the initial cadastral surveys that were supposed to have been done. Now, the point I want to make is that if in 2014, we had already dropped to position 101, and in the same 2014, we were supposed to have taken to Parliament the Land Registry Bill, then perhaps if there was follow through on that matter, we may not now be here in the position to be 134 out of 190 jurisdictions based on the World Bank's most recent report. And especially when we take into account that of the 10 indicators used by the World Bank to assess a country's doing business status, that registering a property is one of those critical 10 points. There are some persons who may argue that the doing business report from the World Bank is questionable. And I myself have had questions about their methodology in terms of their surveys. I do recall quite specifically that in 2004, when the first report was issued, that when we examined how St. Kitts and Nevis stacked up even among our OECS colleagues, we had questions in terms of who did they speak to. And when we dug and got to the bottom of the issue, we discovered that only three questionnaires would have been administered in St. Kitts and Nevis, one to a law firm in Nevis, one to a law firm in St. Kitts, and one to a clerical person, middle management clerical person within the High Court. Nobody else was contacted. So of course, it raises questions about the survey methodology. But that being said, we cannot negate the fact that the doing business rating of the World Bank carries a lot of weight. Because it is obvious that investors look at ratings such as this by a renowned Bretton Woods institution such as the World Bank to make decisions as to where they invest. And that might explain why you would see a natural attraction to those countries that always come in the first 10 in the annual reports, starting with Singapore. This year, I think New Zealand is in first place. And then, of course, you have other jurisdictions like Canada and the United States of America and so forth. That being said, Mr. Speaker, it behooves us to move with alacrity in ensuring that St. Kitts and Nevis presents itself to the world as a favored destination to live, to work, and to do business. And as such, the passage of the land registry legislation will assist us in that regard. That being said, Mr. Speaker, I wish this land registry bill safe passage. May it please you.